We're here today to discuss one of the organizations featured in our new book, How to Heal Our Divides. Joining us is David M. Bailey, Executive Director of Arabon, which is spelled A-R-R-A-B-O-N. The word Arabon means a foretaste of what is to come. Arabon equips Christian leaders in their communities with the resources to effectively engage in the work of reconciliation. Their live workshop initiates conversations and communal problem solving to help transform communities into reconciling communities. Their digital study series and live workshop are designed to create transformative environments for mutual learning. So David, it's really an honor or a pleasure to uh, have you here with us today. So good to be here, man. Thanks so, so for the invitation. Well, I'm really excited about you and Arabon being included in this book. And, um, you know, as we were discussing a minute ago, it's just becoming a lot of momentum around this project. So I'm very glad to see that. And I hope a lot more people learn about your work. Oh, man, thanks. Likewise, I hope, I hope, I hope this, uh, we need all types of um, healing from divides. I'm really glad that you're doing this. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe before we talk about Arabon, we can talk a little bit about you. I'd really love for folks to know, you know, how you got there. <laughs> Yeah, man. So I'm from Richmond, Virginia. I actually lived in Richmond my whole life. Um, there are two important numbers in my life. That's eight and 2008. Uh, when I was eight years old, um, I was really slow in learning how to read. And my dad got me this like second grade level reading Bible and said, man, I guess I figured um, he told me to read two chapters of the Old Testament, two chapters of the New Testament, Proverbs and Psalms every day. And it uh uh, and he was like, I think God would teach him how to like read better. And eventually I did, you know? And so that was, uh, I grew up in one of those old school households who just did what your parents told you to do. So uh, <laughs> that kind of uh, gave me a, a bit of a, uh, like a love for scripture, you know? Oh. And then another thing happened when I was about eight, we started to, um, our church merged with another church that was like literally in the housing projects. And even though I grew up in a, like the suburbs, like a working class suburb area, um, we went to church and I remember like the first few weeks being like, man, I don't want to be with those stinky kids, you know? And I, you know, but those quote, quote, stinky kids became my friends, you know? And <laughs> uh, I, you know, it went until college. I realized that I grew up across different kind of cultural and racial and ethnic lines. And then I was like in a sociology class, people talked about those people. And sometimes those people were poor people. Sometimes those people were rich people. And I realized that people didn't ha know those people by name and they had all these strong opinions about them. And I was like, man, if you kind of knew one another, you actually could really benefit um, from each other's like needs and, and, and each other's gifts. And so, you know, I, I ended up realizing like that's what the church is supposed to do. It's supposed to be. The other thing that happened when I was eight, I started playing music. Um, I started to take around on the piano Grew up in a kind of Pentecostal church. I was the the church piano player by the time I was 11. And by the time I was 14, I'm playing gigs. And that opened the world to me of, like, gated communities and country clubs and things of that nature. So, like, on a Friday night when I was in college, I would play maybe a country club. I might do, like, an outreach ministry in the hood with my um, church on Saturday, my band on Saturday afternoon. Maybe do a jazz club on fr Saturday night. Would maybe do a Presbyterian church for a 9, 11 o'clock service do my Pentecostal <laughs> church at one. And then I played for this like international church that had about 30 different languages spoken, uh, led by a pastor from India and oh my from an evening service. So it basically, I became a cultural anthropologist. You know? I guess you had an exposure to such a diversity of uh, environments. Yeah, totally. And my wife was like, you know, two years and just kind of observing me. She was like, Hey David, you realize you know how to bring people together across differences and you should start writing and teaching about it. And so that's what I did. I started doing that. And that's how Airborne got started. Wow. Yeah. That's that was amazing. in 2008. Yeah. Huh. So kind of how's Airborne organized, you know, in terms of like, do you have like a board? Do you have donors? Do you, or is it, is it just? Yeah. Yeah. So we're not profit. Yeah. We're non nonprofit. Um, you know, we got a board. Um, you know, we got a, I got a staff, you know, a team of folks. Um, and so, you know, what we do is um, we equip communities uh, with the tools to be reconciling communities. But how we do this is um, we really tend into the soul of reconciliation. That's like our methodology. And so we're working with uh, communities that long as the Christian communities could be churches, nonprofits, foundations, Christian schools, 
whether it was grade schools or universities. Um, and we helped them to build these five pillars of reconciling community. Pillar number one is understanding reconciliation and spiritual formation that, you know, we, uh, like if you and I have a conflict, God doesn't care if David's right or if Brian's right. God cares about um, how we honor one another, you know, um, how, how do we uh, position ourselves for God to be glorified and for us to be transformed. And so that's the first aspect of, of, of being a reconciling community to acknowledge in the brokenness and then receive that invitation to be transformed from the inside out. And then the second pillar is to increase cultural intelligence. Uh, that we can have some of the same words but have different meanings, have different things that's appropriate in different cultures. Um, and so, like, knowing that helps us to actually be less offensive and, and communicate more effectively. The third piece is to uh, understand diverse shared narratives, that we can have the same set of facts happen but have very different experiences based off of those facts. The, f- the fourth piece is um, we can engage in uh, cross-cultural collaboration. And then the fifth is uh, engaging in reconciling, participating in cross-cultural collaboration. The fifth piece is engaging in reconciling culture making. So what we do as an organization is really help communities figure out, hey, what does it look like to be a reconciling community within your particular community, within your particular organization? And so as we do that, we build, we, um, we give folks these different skills and, and we kind of develop tools to help them to do that. And we do communities in, in, of learning to help folks do that. Wow. That's very cool. I, I like the way that you've got that structured and yeah. to touch on those different areas and, you know, educate people, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, I think we'd all benefit from that. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like, it's, it's an education with a bias towards action. It's not like, it's like, hey, transformation doesn't happen by information transfer. It actually happens by both relationships, imagination and, and doing things. And so we orient ourselves around that type of activity. Well, that's great because, I mean, that's exactly what I was structuring how to heal our divides. That's what I was looking for, you know, as as people are actually doing things, not just talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm sure the pandemic has, you know, dramatically affected your, you know, trainings. Um, Yeah. Can you talk about what the programs look like physically beforehand, you know, what they look like now? Yeah, we did a lot of things physically. Um, that was really key. We did a lot of things physically where we would um, go and meet people in person um, and help communities. I mean, particularly like what happens with a lot of leaders, the leadership might be here, the staff might be here, whoever they get oversight from or their directional leadership team might be in one place and the people that they, they that follow them might be in a different place. So what we do is we really help directional leaders and staff kind of come together and have some shared knowledge, language, and vision, and then develop a strategy based off of that. And then with their next tier of buy-in, what we do is we work with those group of folks to like provide some resources to kind of help that next tier of, of, of buy-in to again help lead the followers, you know? Um, and so, you know, we were doing that physically, but then we have now, um, just change the medium to be able to do online. I mean, people still, we still can do things in person. We do some things in person still, but um, we do through lines through kind of six week type of cohort sessions and, um, and assessments that we have now. And so really the pandemic actually helped us to be a lot more effective and efficient. That's really good to hear. And, you know, I'm glad that you've pivoted, you know, your uh, processes to be able to take advantage of that. Uh, yeah. w- when you remove the geographic boundaries and you have effective online communication available like this, it's just amazing what can be accomplished. Yeah. I mean, it's, it actually helps us like to do a lot more things like um, in between, you know, like we, you know, we really pay attention to like adult learning techniques and, you know, design thinking deal. Cause a- actually people just need a guide. They need somebody who's like experienced, like, you know, they have the answers within their context. That's the, our approach. Like, you know, you know how to run your organization better than I do. I don't know how you do your thing. But what I can't do is provide you, hey, as you do that, here are a few things to think about. Here's some language to talk about. Here's some areas where you're going to need to to kind of like work on over a period of time. And that's that's the thing that we've been really working on uh, over the last uh, few years that we've honed down in, in the last, in 2020, we really, um, 
work with some of the best folks to learn how to transfer that into like an online experience. So if you think about the breakdown of the different types of organizations that you work with, um, I'm sure it's churches, nonprofits, for-profits, how does that break out? Yeah. So, I mean, so it is like we, we work, one thing we distinctly work with Christian organizations um, as we do as a, as a ministry. Um, we work with foundations, denominations, we work with churches, you know, uh, we work with nonprofits, we work with Christian schools and we work with uh, both, both great, great level and um, universities. And so, you know, this is a, a I mean, organizations are organizations, and so they're called different things, and people are, like, people, and so the details might change, but the some of the, like, the principles are the same. And so, again, because of the fact that we're providing principles and then kind of helping folks to go through a process to figure out how to exegete their context, whether it's a local context or their organizational context, and then begin to give them some exercises to spark the imagination for what it's like to be a reconciling community in their particular context. Um, so we, we take them through processes, assessments, and uh, like design thinking processes and exercises to actually have like an action plan of what, what would they do after working with us. Cool. Cool. And so geographically, are most organizations Virginia or East coast or all over? Oh no, literally. I mean, all over Santa Barbara, San Antonio, Texas, um, the New England area. Um, yeah, and so we, I mean, as a matter of fact, our team, our staff is 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 over the country. I mean, my CEO right now is in Alabama, you know, and we got folks in D.C. and oh, good for you. all over the place. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, we don't all need to be in the same office, you know what I mean, or anything no. like that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and so the thing is that's kind of cool about it is that I'm also, like, I am particularly locally based, and um, our director of learning communities, she's been the longest person on staff with us. You know, she, I mean, we're literally neighbors. I mean, so, is she on 37th? I think, yeah, she's on 37th Street. I live on 37th Street. She lives on 37th Street. There's a girl, there's a boys and girls club between between us. Otherwise, we could walk straight directly, uh, uh, you know, with each other, to each other. So, you know, um we're part of a church community that puts us into practice that, you know, my world is kind of in a 1.5 mile radius. Um, you know, everything is here. Um, post pandemic, you know, we, we, we work out of the church office, um, or either our, either our home office or at our church office. And so I hop on a plane, you know, and we'll go different places when needed, but like we're a community of practice and we're trying to touch, um, people all around the country. So in the past, how have people typically found out about your organization? You know, a lot of it's like through word of mouth, you know. Um, there's a few things. I mean, I think one thing that's unique about Airbonne is that a lot of folks in this uh, race conversation, they tend to have a pretty prophetic voice, you know, and and they're like trying to wake people up. And I think that's a really important role in, in place. For us, we have a pastoral voice with kind of like a, apostolic spiritual entrepreneurial uh um, type of approach and so what we do is we're trying to like kind of profit say hey this is the direction we need to go but they're always always great at like building the thing they can oftentimes kind of like deconstruct and see what's wrong and so kind of what we do is we kind of like help say hey this is how you build the thing that you need to build you know like what they're saying is right but here's how you actually do this and let us let's shepherd you through that process so that's that's how we like our approach that we have and uh, what it is that we do. Hmm. Cool. And so uh, if people want to get involved, um, does it require an organization to engage with you guys or do you have anything for individuals too? Yeah, so we do have things for individuals. And actually, I didn't finish answering your question. A lot of times people give word of mouth because of the fact that they appreciate the pastoral voice and the fact that we build, we build things. So I, um, um, so that's kind of like a lot of us word of mouth. Um, I'm not really great at social media. And so, uh, like, so our social media game, uh, we just haven't prioritized it. Um, hopefully that'd be a thing, but, uh, but a lot of us word of mouth. Um, 
as far as uh, could, you, could you ask the question one more time? I'm just wondering if you only engage with organizations or if there's ways that individuals can, you know, yeah. take advantage of your resources or get involved or how, how does that work? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So a lot of ways individuals, um, they get involved as they learn. So we have study series that we have developed that help to, that people can like share with people and they can actually host events. And, and so we have like a, uh, we have a documentary called 11 a.m. Hope for America's Most Segregated Hour. There's ways that people can do public viewings of it and start discussion groups based off of this. Um, we have um, a couple of different study series like Race Class and the Kingdom of God. That's a great introduction uh, for people to gauge into people place in just society is like a Bible study that helps folks like be able to like literally get through the old Testament and new Testament. You spend six weeks in the old Testament, two weeks in the new Testament, trying to understand the scriptures and God's heart for people place just society. Uh, we have the Matthew 25 project that's coming out. It's a, it's a documentary. That's also a Bible study exploring Matthew 25 called spiritual Matthew 25. And we'll, um, Probably at the, in the, around the fall, the later fall of 2021, we'll have um, uh, Romans 12 and the story of America. And that kind of helps us understand a little bit of our story and how do we engage in a kingdom perspective um, in our story in America. So these are different, like four different type of study series that people can find themselves in if they like want to kind of dip their toe into the topic. If they want to say like, hey, you know, I don't, I'm not really real versed about what the scriptures has to say about this. I love to like dig deep into it. I'm not that versed in the history. Let me try that out. Or I'm, I, I like, I have a bias towards action, and I want some imagination. What can I do in my community as it relates to like the things that Jesus talked about in Matthew 25? That's something that you know uh, people can they can both participate in and they can host and they can share with others. Hmm. Cool. Well, that's a great set of resources. So if people do want to, you know, learn more or engage with Arabon, I mean, the best thing is just go to the website. Yeah, Arabon, A-R-R-A-B-O-N.com. Uh, we've got a new website up and everything. That's It's a lot more clear. And and then also connect on our newsletter, you know. Um, so you can, like, we, we kind of send out resources. We Every week we try to send something out that's valuable to people um, and and not just like, hey, here's cool stuff that we're doing. Nobody wants to read that. So. So we actually literally um, are providing tools that kind of help you to think about, hey, what can I, what can be a, a reconciling community? How can we do that? Wonderful, wonderful. Well, David, um, congratulations. You know, first of all, uh, on all the things that you've accomplished and all the things that Arabon does to help people uh, and help communities become reconcili reconciliating communities. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So again, uh, arabon.com, A-R-R-A-B-O-N.com. Uh, David is the executive director, uh, and um, you can read more about him and his organization in the book, How to Heal Our Divides. So David, thank you so much. Thank you. Blessings to you.